Okay, so you've probably selected your homeschool curriculum and it comes in a box and you lay it all out and it looks like this. Terrifying, right? If you're like me, you're gonna have several different subjects to teach. And if you have multiple children, you're probably gonna have multiple levels to teach in each subject. So how do you make sure that you have time to teach everything? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use a yearly planner to take all of this and make it organized. Using a yearly calendar can be so helpful when planning your homeschool year. Yes, it might sound a little backwards about planning the whole year before you start thinking about your daily or weekly schedules, but trust me, it's gonna help you. I'm gonna take you step by step on what I do to help plan my homeschool year and how to get it into my yearly calendar. I believe that setting goals and having a plan for your homeschool year is crucial, but that doesn't mean it has to be super complicated. Typically, I'd consider myself a planning nerd, but when it came to homeschooling, I had to keep it simple. If I tried to overthink it, then things just wouldn't get taught. The way I like to look at it is the yearly plan is my goal. If I take one curriculum and I follow it exactly to finish it in the whole year, where should I be in a certain month? If I find that I'm getting off track from my yearly schedule, that gives me a chance to reflect and see why. Is it just that the curriculum is going at a faster pace than my child can learn? Or is it because I'm not getting as many lessons in a week as I had originally thought? And I can make adjustments based on what is needed. So if you need to make adjustments, that's no problem. You can just take your yearly planner and move some of the goals back or move them forward and then you're done. Okay, now that we're here on my computer, I'm going to show you the yearly planner that I use to organize all of my lessons for the year and my curriculum. I'll make sure to share this yearly planner both in PDF so you can just print it and fill this out by hand or in a Google Doc, which is what I'm in now, and you can type it in like I'm going to. So up here you've got the year and your students' names. As you can see, I've got a space for all of the different subjects, and if you're using it on the computer, you can feel free to come in and change any of these. And then I've also got the months up here at the top. Each month, each subject has its own box. So how, how do I start? I'm going to be starting with my English language arts um, and my phonics. So for my children, I'm using the All About Reading levels one and two. So I just abbreviate AAR for all about reading, and we're gonna do level two first. Before we move on, the first thing I want to mention is up at the top with the months, one thing that I find helpful is to write how many week, schooling weeks are in each month, and I'll show you why this comes in handy later. My children are enrolled in a charter school, so we go by their calendar, and so in August, we have one week. So I'm just gonna put it in little parentheses up here, and then for September, there are actually five weeks. And so how I determine the weeks, um, just for the planning sake, if there's a split week where there's three days and then two days in, in the fall, like in October, um, I'm just going to count the, the, <laughs> the three days, the week that has the most, just so I'm not double counting weeks. Um, October is four. And I'm going to go ahead and skip this part for you while I finish filling this out. Okay, so now I have finished filling out all of the weeks for each of my months. Um, and as you can see, for my children's school year, we're using the 36-week model. So that's how I want to plan out all of my curriculum, is to be doing school um, during those 36 weeks and trying to finish in the school year. Again, if you're using this for a year round, then feel free to just do it for the whole 51 or 52 weeks. Uh, for the whole year and split your your months up that way. So now we're going to jump into the all about reading level two and I'm going to go to my uh, teacher's manual and I'm going to open up to the table of contents and what I see is all of the lessons for the entire year or for this level right in the table of contents. So I can see that there are 57 lessons. So I'm just going to take the 57 and I'm going to divide it by my 36 weeks. So 57 lessons over 36 weeks. So now I have this 1.58, which is breaking down, I need to cover 1.58 lessons a week. So I'm gonna round that up to two, so that if you know I miss 
a lesson here or there during the year, I know I'm already a little bit ahead, if that makes sense. So now I know that I need to do two lessons a week. So in August, I have one week based on my schedule. So I know that for the first month, I'm going to have to cover lessons one and two. So that was pretty easy. And then we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna abbreviate it. You would clearly abbreviate this with whatever your curriculum is that you're working on. So now I've already done lessons one and two, and now in September I have five weeks. So I'm gonna be covering actually 10 lessons this month with the two a week. So now I will be covering lessons three through 12. Lessons. And then for October, I'm just gonna continue the same pattern and continue with the next four weeks, which is gonna be eight more lessons. So that's gonna put me at lessons 13 to 20. Okay, and then I'm just gonna continue this for the rest of the year. All right, so now you can see that I have all of my All About Reading Level 2 lessons. And when I scroll down for January through May, I got all the way through lesson 57, and then I wrote here, begin all about reading level three, question mark. I like to keep things flexible, so I like to, I love having a little bit of extra space in May. So if we are done and we're ready to move on, we will. But if not, then we can use May to catch up anything if we got a little bit behind at all during the year. But at least I know I'm still going to finish all of level two, or at least that's my hope. The next thing I'm going to do is for my youngest, he will be starting the All About Reading Level 1. So I'm going to use the same exact tactic with his curriculum, is figuring out how many lessons there are, which um, his actually only has 53 instead of the 57 that the All About Reading Level 2 has. So he's going to have a few, a couple fewer lessons. I'm going to divide that by the 36 weeks, and then I'm going to fill this in, and I'll show you when I've got that all finished. All right, super simple, reading is done. So now I'm gonna move on. For my next curriculum, I'm gonna do, I'm using a Layers of Learning, which is a science, history, art, and geography curriculum all in one. So to make that a little bit easier for me, I'm going to add that, all of those topics to this one box. So for my science, history, art, and geography, this curriculum is split up into 20 different units and each unit is intended to last two weeks. I used the first unit at the end of last year as I was testing out this curriculum, um, and I think the two-week model will work for me. So I'm gonna just assume that that's how I'm gonna do it. To make things easy on myself, again, remember, the schedule can be very flexible, so just do whatever you think you want to get accomplished, and if you have to change it, that's totally fine. So this curriculum is set up over these, um, different units. So I'm going to begin with unit 1-2 since I've already done unit 1-1. And this unit should take two weeks. So remember, August only has one week. So I'm also going to throw that into the next month. And for the next, it's awesome that September has five weeks because then I can split the next two units, unit 1-3 and unit 1-4. So now I've got two weeks for unit 1-3, two weeks for unit 1-4, and that one week for unit 1-1 to give me my five weeks. And then I'm just going to go ahead and continue adding these units, and I'm going to continue with this method all the way to the end of the year. Okay, so now I have all of my units planned through the year, and if you notice, there's only four weeks in May, but I have three units here. I'm hoping to maybe... Um, make one unit somewhere a little bit shorter to fit this in or just extend this um, unit and save it for summertime or something. I'm not quite sure, but I wanted to just remind myself that there is that extra unit at the end. Okay, next I want to cover math. Math for my boys, same thing. I'm going to go into their uh, math workbooks and I'm going to look at the table of contents. And in this table of contents, I'm going to see all the lessons. Um, now, for this book in particular, there are lessons within like a whole unit. So I'm going to just roughly kind of count out how many lessons there are and then divide that by the 36 weeks to let me know how many lessons I need to cover each week, just like we did with the lessons in All About Reading. Okay, so now that I figure out how many lessons I need to do, I'm going to just kind of chunk it by the title of the chapter. So for 
um, my son will be using primary mathematics level 3a and b. So we're going to start out with level 3, and it's called numbers to 10,000. All right, and then that is actually going to extend into, it has more lessons in that chapter. I mean, August only has one week, so it's going to take a little more than one week. Then we're going to move into addition and subtraction. The next month, it's going to move into multiplication and division of 6, 7, 8, and 9. And so again, I'm just going to continue with this method all the way throughout the year. Okay, so now I have gone through and input all of the chapters that he will be covering for his math. And just like I did for all about reading level one and two, I'm gonna go through and do the same thing for both of my other children for their math. All right, so now I've got all of the math in for all three of my boys. One thing I wanted to point out to everybody is for my youngest for math, I did not plan out the last half of the year. And this is only because I'm not quite sure how far we're going to get. The curriculum I selected is um, a little more advanced for what he's at right now. So I know we're going to be taking it slow. And so I want to give myself time to take it one day at a time and see where he's at and be able to spend multiple days on a topic if we need to. So the next thing we're going to do is, um, I've got this extra space here. I was going to put this down here in the other, but since I have this extra space, I'm going to put my daily work in here. So one thing I do with my boys is we have what I call daily work or morning work, um, and they know that it's just a couple of pages from a workbook that they have to complete every single day. I like to do it right after breakfast just because as um, the children are done eating, some might finish faster. And these, the daily work is intended to be something they can do on their own. They um, you know, may need me to read the instructions for my youngest, but other than that, they should just be able to get going and started. It's more of kind of a review, if anything. So this year I have selected some Evan Moore books called Daily Handwriting and Daily Fundamentals. And so the thing I like about these books is they're already organized into weeks and days. So since they're organized into weeks and days already, it's really easy for me to go in and know since August has one week for the daily work, we will be completing week one. And then same thing for September, we will be completing um, weeks two through six. And I'm just gonna continue this with week seven through 10 for the next month and all the way throughout the year. Okay, so now I've got all those weeks filled out. For my younger son, I will be using, and I'll put a link to this in the description, but it's called Good Morning Kindergarten. And these are a printable on Teachers Pay Teachers, and they have one for each month. Okay, so now I have my printable in there from Teachers Pay Teachers for my youngest. All right, so the last section is PE and health, and I don't necessarily plan for this. Uh, last year, I went ahead and I put in a different sport for each month, so that was kind of fun. I didn't really follow it to a T, and that's totally okay. Uh, last year, I also had my kids in some extracurriculars. I don't know if that's going to be an option this year. I'll probably just focus on a sport each month like I did last year. Okay, so I went ahead and just filled in a sport for each month that I think I might want to focus on. And then I left this other category in case there's anything else that you guys may want to use. If you have a different science and history curriculum, then you could use this for morning work or anything based on your school day. Okay, guys, so that's basically it. I have all of my months and my subjects planned out for each of my children. I do want to note, I did leave space up here for you to do one per child. If um, you have more children than just three, or you have um, a curriculum that needs a little more explanation on what to do when, and these boxes aren't big enough. So uh, feel free to print one per student if that helps you stay a little more organized. So that's how I plan my year. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to print this out and this will be my goal for the year on what I want to get done. This planner will be available 
um, in a Google Doc and a PDF form, and you can find that in the link below. I hope that you guys found this helpful. Let me know if you have any other questions or would like me to elaborate on anything I said in here. I would be happy to answer it in the comments below. Let's hop back to my living room and I'll let you know of a few more resources I have for you guys. If you feel like you could still use a little homeschool help, Jenny and I are now offering homeschool consulting. With homeschool consulting, you can have more one-on-one -on -one support where Jenny and I will help look at your specific homeschool situation from the curriculum you're looking at, the number of children you have, what your schedule is like, and be able to give you personalized resources and information to help you make your homeschool year a success. To get more information about our homeschool consulting, check out the links in the details below. Also, through the end of August 2020, we're offering a $10 discount on our consulting services. So, what curriculum are you using this year? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button. It really helps us out. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. Until then, see you next time.